Oxford University is one of the great centers of academic excellence in philosophical ethics. I'm sure you won't be so naive as to suppose that this means doing excellent things. No, we know what the university's ethics are in practice. And in any case, a professor of philosophy, sorry, a professor of physiology helpfully reminded us a little while ago. Someone asked him that familiar question, would he think it right for some alien species cleverer than ours to subject humans to experiments? And he said, yes, though no doubt we'd all do our best to keep out of their way. So that's modern university ethics for us. If you're top, you get to exploit the others. Every species for itself and bad luck the weak. Not that there's anything so new about this. The animals have been paying for this sort of ethics at Oxford for 130 years, ever since it appointed its first professor of physiology. And let me say something about that man, John Scott Burden Sanderson. He edited the first English manual for animal experiments. And in all the 400 pages of that foul book, and among all its various hideous and fatal procedures, there is not one mention of any duty of care or compassion towards the animals. But then Burton Sanderson always claimed that animals didn't generally mind being experimented on. In fact, he told a royal commission that dogs didn't feel much pain even when by way of proving something or other, they were baked to death. And that illustrates a general rule in ethics. If you're doing something that others will think shameful, you're certain in time to add dishonesty to it. Dishonesty, disingenuousness, lying, in one form or another, these have always been vivisections associated. And you'll see it now on the university's animal research website. We know that more than 150,000 animals die in or after experiments here every year. To say nothing of the ones killed as surplus or unsuitable, the ones nobody even bothers to count. It's a shameful situation, and therefore it does not appear on the website. The number which does appear on the website is 16,000, which is the number of animals which can actually be fitted into the building. It's the number you would provide if you were advertising a hotel or a hostel. For a laboratory, it's completely meaningless. Last year, Oxford University added its signature to a national declaration promising to be more open about animal research. I therefore publicly invited it to make a start in that direction by putting that 150,000 number onto its website. Of course, it said nothing and did nothing. So there's some more university ethics for you. Empty promise making, also known as humble. But one thing has changed since Burton Sanderson's time. When he brought this new variety of predatory sub-ethics to Oxford in 1882, 
other university people mind him. There was a campaign against him and his new laboratory, led by the head of the Bodleian Library, Edward Nicholson. And here is the creed upon which Nicholson based that campaign and which he had printed and circulated in the university. Animals have the same natural rights of life and liberty as ourselves. And for the same reason that these rights are the necessary outcome of a capacity to feel pleasure and pain. Nicholson got support in all parts of the university establishment. Professors, fellows, heads of colleges signed up. Here's the Bishop of Oxford writing to him. I wish you success in keeping this evil thing out of Oxford. Here's a professor of history. Let us be spared the disgrace of seeing a university building defiled by the horrors of the torture chamber. And they weren't afraid of showing they minded. In fact, the professor of fine art, John Ruskin, said, the scientists slink out of my way as if I were a mad dog. That's what I call excellence in philosophical not just which is not just thinking about it but doing something about it but where are those people's successes today is there a professor of history here is the bishop of oxford here no the university doesn't need me to tell it that it's academically distinguished, that it's full of beautiful buildings, that it's a thoroughly comfortable ride for the humans inside it. What it does need to tell you is that ethically it's become indolent, complacent, slovenly, cowardly, third rate. Well said! Half asleep, and we're here to wake it up.